Hey, it's Chris. So I decided to film here instead of in front of the green screen because the green screen I was having a lot of quality issues with and it wasn't living up to what I wanted. So uh, comment if you want the green screen back and the cool backgrounds and sacrifice the quality or if you'd rather have it like this. So here we go, consciousness. The word consciousness is used to mean a lot of different things. Awareness of one's surroundings, the difference between being asleep and awake, there's also the idea of social consciousness, which is made up of the beliefs and perceptions shared commonly by the people in a society. The type of consciousness we're gonna talk about in this video is the inner experiences of the mind, the sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and thoughts. What it's like to be you and what it's like to be me. The reason I'm proposing this is not as an explanation for some externally observed behavior, but I'm drawing attention to it as a phenomenon that begs explanation. So today, we're gonna dig into some philosophy and try to find out what the bleeping heck consciousness is. As you watch this video, your brain is constructing this image from light that has entered your eyes, translated into electrical signals that go up your optic nerve into your brain. The same is true for your other senses as well. Touch, sound, taste, temperature. Everything you experience is a result of your brain interpreting electrical signals coming up through your sensory nerves. We don't experience the world directly as it is, we experience an interpretation created in our brains. That's consciousness. This leads to a classic thought experiment. How do we know that we're actually in bodies interacting with the real world? How do we know we're not just brains and vats of nutrients getting signals from a computer running a virtual reality simulation? The answer is that our perceptions fit extremely well with having bodies interacting with the real world, whereas we'd expect a computer to have glitches and imprecision and stuff like that. But the reason I brought this up was not to make us worry about whether our experience is real or not, the reason I brought this up is because even in a real world scenario, we're still brains in vats. We call our vats skulls. What does that tell us about consciousness? Well, it tells us our brains are virtual reality machines and our consciousness is a virtual reality that our brains are constructing from the information we get from our sensory nerves. Next, we observe that we're talking about consciousness right now. This means that whatever consciousness is, it must have the ability to affect unconscious matter. It must have the ability to affect our mouths and vocal boxes and tongues so that we can talk about it in the first place. And if consciousness can do that, it means consciousness can trade energy and momentum with unconscious matter. And if consciousness can do that, consciousness can be detected by scientific instruments. So what would consciousness look like if we were to measure it? If we peered closely into someone's brain, would we expect to find images and sounds and smells? We don't, and we shouldn't expect to. There's a big difference between consciousness as we experience it and scientific knowledge. Science can give us insight into how the universe works, but only through theories. Theories are not reality themselves, Theories are concepts about reality, whereas consciousness is reality directly experiencing itself. What this tells us is that if we find consciousness outside of ourselves, it's going to look fundamentally different from our own internal experience of our own consciousness. Which leads to the question, what if in our scientific exploration of the world, we've already found consciousness, but we just haven't recognized it yet? When we look at how the brain functions, we find neurons, billions of cells joined together in an unimaginably complex network, shooting signals to each other through electrical impulses. So we might ask, is consciousness neurons? And the answer is no, because dead people and unconscious people also have neurons. It seems much more likely that consciousness is the patterns of electricity blitzing around in there. This brings us to integrated information theory, the first and only, as far as I know of, scientific theory that attempts to describe consciousness. It starts by defining a conscious experience as a snapshot moment in time 
of our sights, sounds, smells, thoughts, etc. over a range of a few milliseconds, what we think of as an instant. The theory is more formal with axioms and math, which I'm not gonna get into right now, and you can look up if you want to. In my reading of integrated information theory, it says that any connected network of information, such as a network of switches like neurons, is conscious based on the pattern the network is in, as opposed to all other possible patterns it could be in, such as if this switch were turned off and this slider were moved upward. This also doesn't feel right to me because it would mean that anything that has information, even if that information was not moving, would be conscious. Like a book. So, if I may be so presumptuous as to give my amateur opinion, I think that the next direction consciousness research should go should be in the direction of dynamic information. Not about the snapshot moment in time, but the patterns of the information that are moving and changing and feeding into each other. As mentioned earlier, we expect consciousness from the outside to look fundamentally different from how it does on the inside. So if this view of dynamic information is right, then the patterns of information in our neurons are not simply correlated with consciousness, they are consciousness. The universe is not a duality of mind and matter. Mind is a process of matter. Or as the physicist Max Tegmark puts it, mind is a state of matter. This might seem depressingly materialistic, but remember, materialism itself is a concept, a way of representing reality. If we want to know what reality is really like, at least the part of it that is accessible to us, we should look inward. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.